So if our project has been put together, there's still more work we need to do. One of the things that I want to do at this point before we get into the advanced part is I do want to uh, actually, for real, fix up these assets of uh, icons and splash screens. So what we're going to do is use some Photoshop to make some real graphics. I'm going to show you quick ways in Photoshop to make interesting nice graphics and then I'll show you online a few resources of uh, images that you can borrow. So for the moment we don't need Visual Studio. I'm gonna shut it down because it does take a lot of memory and then I'm gonna use another app that takes a lot of memory, Photoshop. So make sure you do save all for everything and you can do file close solution and then you can quit or exit Visual Studio. We have icons and splash screens that we need to create. The files, I need to get a few measurements of dimensions. And then in, in Photoshop, we'll create some graphics. So in um, your project, CVDB, remember you've got a res folder. I'm going to write these down, but if you need to check them yourself, in the res folder, icons folder, we'll do an icons first, Android icons, clicking once, we'll select the icon, and this is 36 by 36, 48, 72, 96. I'm going to write that down. These are the icons, 36, 48, 72, 96. Splash screens is a little trickier, so we'll check those under splash screens Android we only care about the portrait ones so we have I'm gonna make a note LDPI HDPI um, no LDPI MDPI HDPI and then XHDPI in that order so LDPI portrait down here says that it's a graphic of 320 by 426 pixels vertical 320-426 MDPI portrait is 320-470 HDPI is 480-640 extra high DPI is 720-960 if you didn't write them down I'll mention them when we get into Photoshop we need to make graphics for those two purposes. This is not a graphic design class or a web design class. IMCP will serve you a lot better to learn more of this. And whatever amount of time that we'll spend today in Photoshop will not make you a pro in Photoshop. I would recommend you go over to IMCP. And I would recommend then you use you know, graphic software as much as you can. How, much, uh, how many of you have ever used any version of Photoshop ever? Uh, a lot of people, great. If you haven't, that's that's fine you can pick up the basics pretty quickly so uh, here in these computers let's see what version do we have we have uh, Photoshop CC 2015 don't select elements 2014 or whatever go to your start menu and launch Photoshop 2015 so in the world of graphics um, one good rule of thumb is we often want to start with an image that is larger and then shrink it down as necessary. The opposite is often a problem. If we start with a small image and blow it up to be larger, we often get degradation in quality. So I see so many examples in the real world where I visit a restaurant and then I look at their menu and it looks terrible, I see all the pixels because they had their photo off of their website, I bet, and then they printed it out, and it looks terrible. So really, you want to start with images that are larger and size them down. They often have, then, a better visual quality. If we take a small image make it larger, we lose quality. So what I'm getting at here is we're going to create a file trying to think in terms about a larger size so that then it covers the spectrum of sizes that I need to work with. In my notes, I need an image of 36, 48, 72, and 96. So I'm not going to create an image. I will not create an image of 36 pixels and then blow it up 
to 96. I want to start at 96 and shrink it down to the different sizes. So from big size to small size often gives you better graphics results, graphical results, than lower size to bigger size. <laughs> Here in Photoshop, then, let's go to File, New. Up at the top here, name, let's call this icon. Our, our units, width and height units, let's change that to pixels. Resolution 72, width and height 96. So we would want to start at the larger size. Now, if we start at 96, well, that's the, high, that's the extra high DPI resolution. There are already extra, extra high DPI resolutions. And then there's going to be extra, 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 extra high resolutions. So we're going to get into that problem. When the newer phones come out, now 96 is a small size. And when I try to resize it to the larger size qualities, now it's too small. So actually, we'll start these up pretty big, and eventually we'll get We'll get to this size. Phones eventually will be x x x x extra high uh, to get up to this higher quality. So I'm going to start with a larger dimension of 512 by 512. Uh, 72 resolution, color mode RGB, and background contents. In the documentation, we read that icons should be transparent so that you can see through the empty parts to the background of the person's wallpaper or whatever. So we don't want a background color of white here. We want a transparent background. So we're going to give this project a name, 512 by 512, 72 resolution, transparent. Make sure that sets to pixels and, and you, that you didn't leave it at inches. We don't want a 512-inch image here. <laughs> Click OK. Then we'll go to the File menu to Save As. And we'll save this to your flash drive. Save it. It doesn't have to be in the project folder yet. Just save it somewhere in your flash drive. This is going to be a work in progress file. So File Menu, Save As. I'm going to put this on my flash drive. I have a, a separate folder. I have a folder of, of the project, but I've got a folder for this class. Uh, don't put this file in your project folder yet unless you have your folder organization, however you makes sense for you. I'm going to put this into my class project file. And uh, our save as type is going to be PSD. So this is going to be a work in progress file. Ultimately, if anyone remembers, the documentation tells us we need our icons to be a certain format. Anyone remember what that format is? PNG. PNG. So we're working with the work in progress version, PSD, which will save all of our layers, editable text. It's a work in progress. Eventually, we're going to then export this as PNG for it to be used in our project. <coughs> I think I'll also call it Icon 512, just to visually quickly tell me that this is a 512 pixel sized icon, that I will need to resize it to other icon sizes later. Uh, everything else defaults there should be fine. Layers, of course, the profile, all that's fine. It will then probably ask about compatibility. I would leave that checked on so that you can open it in different versions of Photoshop um, that you may have access to later. I'll click OK on that. So then here we have the best thing and the worst thing, an empty document. We can make anything here. Where do I start? So if you don't have much experience in Photoshop, we have all of these various tools to work with, such as the brush tool, and I'll be able to draw my own cool icon. Self-portrait, yep. Let me fix it up right here. Self-portrait. Glasses. 
chicken, my chicken haircut. <laughs> ah, okay, great. So anyway, we can do graphics with paintbrush and all of that. I don't have my Wacom tablet today, so I won't do that. We have a bunch of cool built-in icons instead that we might use. Um, then I'll show you online icons as well. If uh, you go over here to this plain old square rectangular <coughs> tool, click on that once, that'll make basic squares. You can have a really fancy icons of squares. Okay, well instead, if you click and hold your rectangular icon, we have custom shapes. Photoshop has a bunch of built-in high quality shapes that we can use, that we can manipulate, and then we can use our own a little later. So click and hold the rectangle tool and select custom shape tool. Then at the top on the context sensitive bar, we have a bunch of options such as color and such. And then we've got the actual shapes. By default it gave me an arrow. Well, I have custom shapes here. Um, I can use the heart shape. start to make an icon with a heart. Well, we do have more than these listed here. This is not really that many. If you click on the icon here for options, it looks like a gear, maybe a flower. So click on the downward triangle for the shape, then click on the options gear. We can say, show me animal icons. So you click on animals and just click OK. You get a few animal icons. So I can use this snail. You can jump between these different sort of books of icons. But I would just recommend select all. Show all of the possible icons at once, the possible shapes, vector shapes. So you can click All, just say OK, and then you get a lot of them. And then I would pull that panel out so you can see a bunch at once. So then here I can use these different shapes. I could possibly use the you know different starting point shapes. Uh, you know I can get the trophy, give it a gold color, then drag out a, a size there. Then I can switch to a different shape. Switch to a different shape. something else so obviously if you haven't used Photoshop definitely raise your hand because Photoshop is one of the most complex software out there there's a lot to do a lot to learn and a lot to use and a lot to make mistakes on you can make guides uh, let me show you that way. If you go up to the view menu and then we show our rulers, view menu rulers, from the left side you can click and drag from the ruler out a vertical line and that should snap into place somewhere in the center. And then from the top you can drag from the top and that'll snap in the center. And you will get where they cross the exact center. We have these various layers on the side, and you can delete your layers to start over. You can undo. Create layers. A 
let's say I'm going to um, use some of these shapes and I have these colors that I can work with you see when you've got a shape selected I've got my custom shape tool turned on the little blob I can select the shape up there I can select a fill color on the left well, that's a lot of colors but not enough it's not my perfect color so you can always go here to the um, the actual color picker and then mix up the, mix the perfect color and all of that or this also has uh, swatches that we can use that are built in of various pastel colors and such. We have another panel called colors, swatches. So you have lots of panels, lots of windows. If you see your colors panel, you should have been a swatches panel. And this one's got options to show me these other kinds of color swatches if you want. Let's say I'm putting some, some shapes, some colors. Maybe I want it more complex. Well, we have these built-in uh, styles that might be interesting. You should have a panel called Styles on the right side. And we can uh, add some pre-made combinations of effects that will change your designs. So I can go to Styles and click one of these, for example. So this is from the styles panel. If you don't see a if you don't see a panel, all your panels are also hidden under window, window menu. You can go to window menu styles. You got some styles. Well, this only has like twelve styles. There's more styles hidden inside of the the options. Instead of there being a, a little gear, there's a menu for styles panel, and you can switch between these different style books style palettes. Clicking there and I say, okay, show me abstract styles. And click OK. You've got these other styles. A lot of them real, uh, a lot of them give you a, a real retro feel of the 90s about, hey, look what I can do with graphics. It's the 90s. And some of them are a little bit more subdued and nicer. But usually getting something canned like this can give you a starting point but if you want to tweak any of these styles that you choose maybe you like that or you want to change it from blue frame blue flames to red flames well all of these styles are combinations of effects and you will see that on your layer you've got all of these effects that you can double click on and further refine so because this is a very um, creative aspect of things let me pause for a few minutes, play with some shapes and colors and styles and text if you want, uh, and then we'll, we'll move on. But that's another way to make an icon for your, for your apps. You could use the text tool, the T right there for text, and maybe just you know choosing an interesting font. Uh, that could be your, uh, your icon. An interesting font could be your icon. And then on your text, you can add the effects. Whatever you're creating here, uh, remember, think in terms, make it as big as possible to fill up as much to the edges because that whole shape there is going to be your icon. If you only make your icon something like this, you've got all of this empty space that's going to look very weird when it actually goes onto the device. It's going to be in the corner. Look very odd. So take a moment, just play with that for a bit, see what you come up with, and I'll show you another way to make interesting.
As you're creating your masterpiece, don't forget to save it once in a while in case your computer crashes.
All right, everyone, let me show you one more thing, then we'll take a break. Let's say you don't have any artistic talent. You can borrow, you can borrow, you can borrow the, uh, the artistry of others by going like this. If you go to the web, uh, go to the web browser, and uh, you've probably all heard of the uh, very popular emoji icons. Emoji comes from a, a global standard, and then different manufacturers have their own version. So the Apple emoji are the more famous ones. Then there's the Samsung version of the emoji and the Twitter version of emoji, but they all come from a basic standard. There's a standard that says, you know, smiling face with money in its mouth. You know, that's the official name of that little icon with the tongue, and he's got a little dollar on his tongue. And then Apple's version looks a certain way, and Samsung and all of them. Well, if you, um, if you go to the website, getemoji.com, GetEmoji is a, a cool website that shows you the emoji in different versions, and then you can copy and paste these icons uh, to your projects. So depending on your operating system, it'll look in different ways. So again, right here, the uh, you know here's the here's the classic poop icon. Where's the eyes? Well, that's the Apple version of it. This generic one looks like that. Then there's the one of uh, Halloween, the pumpkin. Well, that's that one. So these are um, clickable, selectable, copyable uh, to use them in your projects. The catch is depending if you've got this font or not. So let's say you're browsing all of these particular, these are fonts. These, these are based on a font. So let's say I wanted to use the pumpkin icon can select it and right click copy back in Photoshop I have to switch over to my <coughs> text tool on my text tool and if I try to paste it in it may or may not show up right away because I probably have to switch fonts let's see here let's see if we've got the right font on these computers Okay, so if you want to use one of these emojis from getemoji.com, you need to choose any of the fonts that is called Sego UI, any one of these. Then you get a, a font version of this graphic. And since it's a font, it's, it's vector-based, it can then be resized to all of these sizes. Then we can attach a style to it. We can add a drop shadow. We can distort it with free transform and all of that. So I, I guess I'll just use Sego UI regular. Or I guess not that one. Which is the right one? Sego old. Oh, symbol. So go UI symbol regular. Yeah. Okay. That's the one it's got to be, I guess. Um, so we've got Windows 7 in these computers, so we have to do this method. If you've got newer version, Windows 10 and such, it's a lot uh, more compatible because everyone loves emoji. So Windows 10 has emoji built in. Windows 7, not quite. So we have to go over here to the Sego UI symbol regular font. And then I can put that in as the um, I can put that in as the symbol, and then resize it and change the color and do all that fun stuff. So see, look at that. That's going to be a perfect icon for my app. And remember to use up as much space as possible on the um, in your canvas here because that icon is going to get shrunk down. You know, it's going to get shrunk down eventually to that sort of a size. And if that's not very visible at that size, it's not a very good graphic. Mm -hmm. 
So again, how you do that is you go to getemoji.com, you browse these emoji icons and select one. So I'm going to select um, one of these. I think they even tell you the name when you hover on it or when you click it or something. Anyway, so I'll get that one, girl with bunny ears. And then I can go back to Photoshop and use the font um, Segoe. symbol, paste it in, probably need to change the font size, so maybe I can base my icon on this. Uh, keep in mind though that everywhere where there's the checkerboard pattern is a transparency so this would look very odd in that when I put it in my actual uh, as when I put it in my actual app it's going to uh, be transparent at that point so I have to fill in colors there even better Now there was another one that I used to recommend to classes, but I don't recommend it as much anymore. I'll still show it to you, but this um, this this shows generically. If you were to visit the same website on your Mac or on your Android phone, depending on your operating system, it'll show the emoji in your operating system. We're in Windows 7, so we see them like this. If you do go to it on your Mac, or in your Android phone, then they will change. Some of them, it doesn't understand them. Windows doesn't understand this one here, so it just shows it as nothing. But if you visit it on your Mac, you know, this one is a plain old laptop. If I go there on my Mac, it's going to look like a MacBook. Some of these that are a phone, it's going to show it here as a Windows phone because I'm on Windows computer. But if I visit it on my, on my Android, it'll show it like a Samsung phone, I guess. But anyway, these this is like the generic standard of all emoji. Um, there's another one. Here's one that I that I used to like. If you go to emoji1.com, emoji1 is like a like an, a project of a global group of people that are making a version of emoji that is somewhat open source, but you still have to license it. So here you would see their versions of emoji, version 2, version 3, and uh, like there's the classic police officer two, version 2, the police officer version 3, there's the evolution of everyone's favorite, everyone's favorite icon, shinier. So this place has, uh, you can buy all of these icons and you can use them for commercial purposes and such high quality you'd have to get the license but over at the if you're content with emoji version 2 you can go there and get a bunch of free icons that look a little nicer perhaps because these are all fully designed and they've already got the colors and the drop shadows and they're editable to various degrees so if you want to you want that little pug to be your icon, yeah, just go to this section here and click download. This is the legacy one. You can go check that out on your own. But this one, I, I don't like it as much anymore because they've really gone over to really promote their, their paid license version for their 3.1 uh, branch. And um, price-wise, I think it's a little high if you're trying to use it for many purposes. So you can explore that site there and go get the go get the 2.0 version of these icons. 
So when I was looking at the pumpkin a moment ago, here it is how they've got it. This one you have to do a little bit more hassle. You can't really just select it and copy it. Uh, I don't think so. You have to download the actual files to go over to download it for developers or consumers. Even that's not perfect. So this site used to give out the graphics in a, it used to give out these emoji in an actual editable graphic that we could open in Photoshop and then manipulate a bit. So if you are staring at a blank Photoshop document and don't know what kind of icon to create, we have the basic built-in shapes. We have styles. If you have more skills here, you can go to the pen tool and make your own graphics or go to the manipulation tools to edit these vector graphics. You could go to various online you know, emoji graphics and still manipulate these. Um, there's emoji one and all of that. So there's different ways to create icons if you not don't have a lot of ability in graphic design and and that sort of thing. Text fonts, you could go off and find a cool font and then make a font based icon for your for your project as well. We're gonna take a break and then when we come back uh, we'll have some more time to work because I do want you to create uh, your task is going to be to create um, some icons after the break, I'll show you. Okay, let's say I created my icon. How do I add it to my project? So after the break, I'll show you how to add it to the project, and then you'll have to create your own icons and splash screens. So it's 8.45. Let's take a 10-minute break. We'll be back at 8.55.